All right, so today I want to introduce you to the bypass ball python. You may not have heard of the bypass. It actually consists of two genes, the gravel and the spark. And usually when you think of a gravel, you think of a gravel yellow belly, which is a highway. And usually when I think of a spark, I'm thinking of a spark yellow belly. That is the puma. And if you actually mix the spark with the gravel, you get the bypass, kind of bypassing the yellow belly. And one of the advantages of bypassing the yellow belly is if you actually breed two yellow bellies together, Together, you get an all-white snake and that all-white snake will mask all the other genes that are in the combination so it's a little bit more difficult to work with the bypass is kind of tricky to actually work with too because it can be really variable in the visual appearance from one bypass to another so today I'm going to jump over the internet and I want to show you the potential of the bypass how to make it and some of the limitations and confusion surrounding the bypass ball python all right, so I'm gonna jump over here in the world of ball pythons, and I wanna start with the genetic wizard, and I wanna show you how to make a bypass ball python. And here's one way you can make a bypass. This is probably the best way you can do it. You can start with a highway, which is a gravel yellow belly, and breed the highway to a puma, which is a spark yellow belly. Both of these are allelic complexes, and I'd say when it comes to the highways or the pumas, they can be extremely challenging projects. And one, probably one of the biggest challenge that you have working with these genes is if say for example you take a highway you breed it to a normal half the offspring come out as gravels half come out as yellow bellies and when it comes to the visual appearance of the gravel and the yellow belly as a standalone morph as a matter of fact if you took a gravel a yellow belly and a spark lined them all up and you put a normal next to it you probably couldn't tell the difference between any of them they'd all look like normal some people can pick out the the gravel or yellow belly or spark compared to a normal but a lot of times even the experts can't tell the difference as a matter of fact if you go over to morph market and start looking for gravels a lot of them will be listed as a gravel slash yellow belly because they look almost exactly the same and you really can't tell them apart unless you breed them out to something else but in this case starting with two allelic snakes with these both of the allelic complexes of the puma and the highway you don't get any single genes and you don't get any normal which is really powerful. This is probably the best combination that you could do with two of these snakes. And these are the results that you would get breeding these together. You would get 25% ivories, which is an all white snake with black eyes. Pretty awesome. It's the super yellow belly. You get 25% pumas, 25% highways, and 25% of the time you would get a gravel spark, which is the bypass. Pretty much an allelic complex that bypasses the yellow belly, which is pretty awesome. So I wanted to show you kind of the more typical visual appearances of a highway, a puma, uh, an ivory, and a bypass. All four snakes that you'll get out of this pairing. And the first one I want to show you is the highway. If someone actually asked me, what is your, you know, pretty much the standard, typical visual appearance of a highway? This is probably it right here. This is what a highway is. is I'd say this is what it usually looks like. There's a lot of variability in a lot of these combinations. And the highway usually has a dotted yellow line right down the top of the snake. It almost looks like the dotted yellow line going right down the middle of a highway. I think that's why they call it a highway. And if you look really close at the sides, it almost has almost like an electric like a lightning bolt coming right down the top of the snake makes for a really impressive visual appearance so here is what a puma looks like this is your typical puma and usually the pumas instead of a dotted line down the back it has a solid line right down the back and usually it doesn't have much pattern at all on the sides maybe a little bit of pixelation but usually nothing other than that maybe just a little bit of granulation it's a pretty awesome snake and here's what an ivory looks like this this is the super yellow belly, an all white snake with black eyes. And you're probably thinking, you know, why would you want to bypass the ivory? Because it's such an awesome snake. And the problem is, is ivories aren't really that expensive. They're pretty cheap to pick up an ivory. So you can, you can have an ivory with a lot of really high end genes in the mix and you have to sell it as a cheap snake because it pretty much masks all the other genes in the mix. There's really only two genes that I know of that can 
can break through the visual dominance of an ivory, and that is, one of them is the leopard. I don't know if you've seen the leopard ivories, but if you're working with ivories, I would highly recommend adding leopard. A lot of times you can get some really amazing leopard ivory combos. As a matter of fact, if you take leopard, mix it into an ivory with other genes in the mix, a lot of times the leopard will draw out the other genes with it, and you'll get some really crazy looking snakes. You can see multiple genes in the snake only, usually if there's leopard in the mix, and probably to a lesser degree. I'd say you can use um, you could use Anchi or Super Anchi. Anchi pulls out a little bit of color and pattern, but usually the Super Anchi really pulls it out, but not as much as the leopard. So when it comes to all the other genes in the ivory, the ivory it usually masks the other genes, and a lot of people kind of steer clear of the white snake unless you're breeding like two ivories together and making a whole clutch of ivories or something like that. So here is the other combination that you would get out of that pairing. This is the spark and the gravel together, which is known as the bypass. Pretty much bypasses the yellow belly. Really powerful breeder. So in this case, if you took a bypass and you bred it to either the puma or the highway, you wouldn't get any white snakes because the yellow belly is not in the snake. Pretty powerful. And this can be really visually uh, variable from one to another. I pulled up a few bypasses and we kind of take a look at this one. It, it, it has the spark and the gravel. So a little bit of the gene from the highway, a little bit of the gene from the puma without the yellow belly. So you almost get like a halfway cross between the two. Usually you get a kind of the dotted line of the highway and on the sides you get a little bit of pattern sometimes the pattern is completely wiped out from kind of the puma side of the combination it's kind of weird but in some cases it is completely different from one to another so this is one version of the bypass here is another one take a look at this one this one looks almost like a highway it has a lot of this electric color right down the sides and the kind of the dotted line on the top here's another one take a look at this this is it's really unexpected Expected, looking at all these different bypasses, the variability between them. This one almost looks like a puma with a solid line right down the top and the wiped out side. Pretty incredible. Here is another version. This one kind of almost has like a halfway in between, kind of a dotted and a solid line with kind of a wiped out side. And I pulled up a couple more here. This is it's kind of interesting on a lot of these. Some of them are more yellow. Some of them are a little more orange. Some of them have more of a dotted line some have more of a kind of a just like a solid line it's really extremely variable and I would say unless you really know the visual appearance of the parents it would be hard to pick them out of like a whole bunch of different bypasses <laughs> it's difficult you know if someone just threw all the snakes together the bypasses the pumas and the highways it'd be pretty difficult to pull them out unless you really knew the visual appearance of the parents and you look, are kind of looking at the whole clutch of offspring I think it would be a little a little bit easier if you knew what the parents looked like so here's another one. This one's a little bit different. It has a little bit more yellow, a little bit more lightning down the side, not quite as dotted on the back. And I have one more actually right here. This is another bypass. And this is probably the one with that I like the most with a really high definition, really super bright. Some of them aren't as bright as this one. This is really an awesome snake. So I wanted to show you uh, some of the genes we can mix in with the bypass to see even more variability. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, the first one I wanted to show you is the pastel. When you mix pastel into the bypass, you can have really dramatic results as far as the visual appearance, and it's really variable from one pastel bypass to the other. And it's hard just showing you one example of the combination because it's so variable. So I want to show you just a few of the different pastel bypasses. <laughs> look at this one this is super crazy take a look at this this is the pastel gravel spark and it's it's, it's it's sometimes you add in pastel and sometimes you get a, like a kind of a weird white background it's kind of a weird anomaly when you work pastel into the the highways or the freeways or the bypasses kind of I think it really depends on the combination of all three genes coming together to give you this really white background and here's another version of the same 
same exact jeans. <laughs> this is gonna blow you away. Take a look at this. This is, I can't even believe this is the same. As a matter of fact, I was wondering if some of these were identified wrong. You go down some of these rabbit holes and you see all these snakes with the same jeans and you, it's, it's such an amazing difference between some of them. You start guessing. As a matter of fact, if you were breeding this and looking at all the different examples of all the combinations, you'd probably start second guessing yourself is if did this really come out of that combination pretty amazing that this is the pastel gravel spark it's almost like kind of like the puma version of the bypass with a pastel in the mix makes for a really amazing combo i can't say i've ever seen a snake that look quite like this out of anything that i've ever seen pretty amazing here's another version of the pastel bypass really crazy from a white background to a yellow background to a really strong stripe right down the back here is a couple more take a look at this this one's kind of like the white background not quite as yellow and here is one more version this is pretty incredible with all these different versions of a pastel bypass pretty amazing so here's another one I want to show you. This is actually the Super Pastel Bypass with two copies of the pastel. And usually when you have two copies of the pastel, it, it kind of washes out little spots on the snake. You'll see that in a lot of Super Pastels where it kind of washes out some of the pattern in the snake to a greater or lesser degree. And let me tell you, there's a lot of different versions of Super Pastels, so you can get a lot of variability between the Super Pastel Bypasses. So here's another gene I wanted to show you mixed in with the bypass and that is the Enchi. Makes for a really impressive combo. And the Enchi essentially what it does is it really reduces the pattern and it really brings out a lot of the yellow or orange. A lot of times you'll get a lot of really bright oranges coming out of Enchi combinations when you work it into the mix. And here's what happens if you work Enchi in with a bypass. Take a look at this. This is a really awesome snake. Almost looks like some of the Mardi Gras combos with the um, with the with the freeways and the Enchi makes for a really amazing combination. Here's another one I wanted to show you. This is Leopard. Leopard is kind of a pseudo dark morph. As a matter of fact, if you work Leopard into some really dark snakes, a lot of times it'll make the darks really darker, and a lot of times it'll really jumble up the patterns on a lot of combos. And here's what happens if you work Leopard into a bypass. <laughs> Take a look at this snake. This is really incredible. This is the Leopard Spark gravel ball python so if you, if you took this and you bred it to something else you would get 50% leopards and 50% uh, normal looking snakes and half of them would be sparks half would be gravels and you would get no normals pretty awesome combination and here's the last one I want to show you this is probably the ultimate bypass combo that I found over here on morph market take a look at this crazy snake this is a pastel enchi bypass and when you mix pastel with with Enchi, a lot of times it'll really bring out a lot of the yellows and bright oranges in the combination. This thing is crazy. <laughs> like, as a matter of fact, I was looking at the price on this one. This one actually sold for $1,200. If this one was still for sale and I actually had a budget to buy a snake right now, I would probably be buying something like this. These are really awesome projects to get into. They really hold their price. They're pretty expensive as far as some of the simple gene combos because it's, it's really difficult to figure out which genes you have in the mix when you're breeding it to something else and then breeding it back you almost have to grow them up and then prove them out to really figure out what you got and that kind of keeps the price pretty high for some of these amazing combinations all right so it is time for the question of the day and charlie henderson jr asks I have a five-year-old female ball python that is het for a recessive gene, but we don't know what it's het for. How can I prove out that female? And that is a very good question. Probably the easiest way to prove out an unknown one copy of a recessive gene would be to take that female and breed anything to that female and then keep some of the male offspring. So keep in mind, if you breed it to something else, 50% of the offspring will have one copy of the recessive gene. So everything will be 50% het 
prevent the unknown recessive gene. So probably what I would do is I'd probably hold back about three of the males that are 50% het for that unknown gene. And then what you could do is over the next few years, you could take one of the males, breed it back to the female. If you get all normal looking snakes, then you know that male doesn't have the copy of the recessive and kind of cycle through all your males until you actually hit it. And then 50% of the offspring should be visuals for that unknown recessive. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.